get your Bibles and we're not going to prolong the time because if you're anything like me tonight, Catherine, you can come and grab this for me. I don't, I run out of space up here. If you're anything like me tonight, I want to hear the conclusion. Want to hear the conclusion of the whole matter. We're talking about last night we were we were beginning our teach and talking about the power of true faith. I have to tell you, even after the service, Pastor Ripley and Sister Ripley and I spent almost another two hours and we couldn't come out of it um, because the word of the Lord is being made plain and it's being made rich. When you look at the principles of faith and the activities of our faith, then we understand that the Lord, the Bible said that the Lord would not put more on us than we can bear. There is truth in that scripture because our bearing up of what the Lord has placed in our lives and put in the midst of our lives, things that we are to accomplish, it is not more than we can bear. It is, listen to what I'm saying, it is our faith assignment. And so what we are in pursuit of as believers is our faith assignment. Pastor Ripley and I were talking about this and this is a very, very, very powerful statement I'm about to make. And that is we must be careful that we don't get caught up in another man's faith assignment we don't get caught up in looking at something that somebody else is doing and the Lord has not called called you to do that because if he calls you to do it he upholds you in it amen somebody when you look at the principles and you think about that the Lord will not put more on me than I can bear then what the Lord has placed on me or what he have allowed me to go through at this particular time or persevere through or handle or pray through because everything that he puts on us isn't really a going through. Some of it is a praying through. Some things he wants us to pray through. Then we must come to a place we learned last night that when the faith assignment becomes heavy, then we're feeling the weight of it because we're trying to carry it ourselves. We were never meant to carry the burden of the Lord. Come on, somebody. The burden of the Lord is his burden. Come on, somebody. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Why does God have the authority to say that? He has the authority to say that because that which he allows to come into existence, it has already been pre-designed. The end of it has already been completed by his word. He never sends out anything in your life without having already wrapped it up with a word that has the power to bring it all the way through to its full potential. I'm already preaching right there. I'm already preaching right there. But, 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 but see, our job is we have to search out the word that supports the assignment. That's already good, y'all. And I'm not going to get started that, 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 that early because then I'll just really just start preaching. So then, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that there is nothing that I am told to do. There is nothing that is pressing on me that have that already been finished in the spirit realm. It's already been spoken. He's given me the responsibility to keep applying the word to it so that it can live. I'm not hearing y'all say nothing right there. When death came in the Old Testament, they sent for the word. I didn't hear y'all say that they wouldn't got Jesus when Lazarus died. 
Oh, y'all, his cousins wasn't enough. His friends wasn't enough. They went and got what could call him back to life. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. I'm raising somebody's faith already. You don't have a dead situation that can't be called back to life. If you want it to live, it can live. I said, well, you know what, Proverbs, I, I just don't know, but maybe it was, a, it was the Lord's way. If you wanted to live, it would live. The Bible said that Jesus said in his word, I am the resurrection. If any man believe in me, though it was dead, yet shall it also live. Believe in me. Believe in my word. We're going somewhere tonight with this. We're going somewhere tonight with this. Because I said yesterday, I, 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 I made a statement yesterday about, about gold. And I said, how many people remember me saying uh, yesterday that we, we um, that in the United States, when they, y'all remember that statement I made? In the United States, that helped you, didn't it? In the United States, they can't just press money because they want to press some more money. They got to press money if they have the gold currency to match the money that they're printing. If not, then it's counterfeit money. When I got back to the hotel last night and I was sitting up in the bed and the thing hit me again. He said, you know what? As a matter of fact, before I left this building, I was in the bathroom and I said, wow. Because I don't know about you, but, 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 but sometimes when you lay the microphone down, and the word of the Lord is being made manifest. It doesn't stop because you lay the microphone down. It just keeps, he keeps, he, he completes what he's trying to say to you. And so when I got in the bathroom and even when I got home, he started talking to me about, about that gold. And he said, he said, let me help you with something. He said, in the natural, in the natural, the Bible said, wherever a man's uh, treasure is, there also lies his heart. And so God always connect the treasures of this earth with our hearts. So when he, when he says, when he showed me that, 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 that if you don't have enough gold, then you cannot, you cannot uh, uh, print money because it would be a counterfeit. He said, Juanita, that is the reason why I've been trying to get you to understand that I said in my word mm, that he knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me, I shall come out as pure gold why because if i don't come out as pure gold it is the only thing that makes me legal to be able to use the word without it becoming counterfeit he didn't say we'll come out as silver i'm talking to somebody right there there's got to be backup there's got to be currency for what you say you just can't quote the Bible and just because you quote it, you think it's going to come to pass. It doesn't work like that. It's got to be in your spirit. What am I talking about? That word has to transform your heart first. It's got to change you first before you have the power to change something with it. God, I just said something right there. I just said something. That was heavy right there. I, I, I I'm going to quote this scripture. You can't quote it. You can't quote it and activate it. It can't be activated until it is made manifest in your life. That is the reason why there are some things that you have to go through. Why? Not because it's the devil. Not because Satan is raging. Not because the devil is trying to give you a fit. It is because God is trying to give you an opportunity to exercise yourself in the word. step into a situation you're not guessing if the scripture gonna work okay I'm not saying nothing to y'all I'm not saying nothing you ain't you 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 ain't hoping it work come on here somebody when you done been through something and then out of your out of your belly out of nowhere pops up the word and it was that scripture that helped you to make it through but next time you see somebody with the same problem you're not just quoting something you're making something manifest in your life come to pass. Go to Mark 
for the fourth chapter. Go to Mark the fourth chapter. Go to Mark the fourth chapter. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to walk through this. We're going to walk through this. Got to read this for you. Mark the fourth chapter and the 24th, 23rd verse. I'm going to read it in an Amplified Bible. It says, if any man has ears to hear, let him, now my Amplified Bible said, your King James Version may say, let him hear. Did somebody's Bible say that? Let him hear. The Amplified Bible says, it says, if any man has ears to hear, let him be listening. You notice he didn't say, let him listen. Because listen says, there's an end to what's being said. Be listening said, continue to listen. Prepare yourself to listen. Posture yourself to listen. Okay, come on somebody, because a lot of us walk around here and we ain't, we ain't trying to hear God. Prepare yourself to be listening. Act like you're looking for a word. Keep your spirit ready to receive a word. Because I'm going to say something in here that's going to help you. Because, because if, if the ground is not properly fertilized, then the message would go out. But the heart would never receive the word. Because you have not properly prepared yourself to be listening. He's not talking about ears in the natural. He's talking about the ears of the spirit ram. God, I'm saying something right there. It says, listen, be listening and let him perceive. Let your perception about what you're hearing be right. And comprehend. Let your understanding of what is being said, be right. Okay, y'all. <laughs> Let me just say this to you. Let me help you understand why purification is necessary. Purification is necessary for the practical, the practical reason of, of true perception. Because if you don't, if you don't become purified. And you, don't, and you don't purify in your heart, your perception will be off. That's the reason why you can take one scripture and the scripture said, don't touch it. And somebody else over here said, well, it didn't mean touch it all the time. It mean touch it when you in the position that you can't touch it. And then when you get over here, somebody, well, that ain't what that mean either. It mean that if you put in a situation where you got to touch it, he ain't going to make you feel bad because you got to touch it. Okay, let me back it all the way up here and I'll show you a real example. Right here, he says, don't touch nobody and don't, and don't, and don't lay with nobody that's not your husband. Over here, it, what that mean, do that mean when you, because me and Junior live together for 12 years and we got two kids and how do I just walk out like that? So for me, God know I'm trying to process out of it. But in the spirit realm, because marriage really ain't just a piece of paper, we really is already made one. Here goes somebody over here. We had said we was going to get married six months before we got saved. So why separate now when we already together? See, three different perceptions because there's three different levels of purification. Until you come all the way over here and find somebody that says, okay, that thing hit my heart. If God said, come out, I got to go. Junior, I'll see you in six months at the altar. So make sure that when you hear the word, that you're perceiving it right. You're perceiving it to the end of its order and not the process. Because we always want to take the word through our process. 
If God said put it down, spirit put it down. He don't mean be putting it down. Okay. Listen, let me, let me help you to understand how I know people haven't really, really, really met the real word. And they're meeting messages of the temple, but not the word, Catherine. Because the Bible said that here, 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 Paul, he had not met Jesus. He had not known the voice of Christ. He's on the road to Damascus, a mass murderer, killing everybody he saw that proclaimed to be a Christian. He had an encounter with the spirit of the Lord that knocked him off of his donkey, spoke to him out of the spirit realm, spoke in his spirit, changed his mind. When he got up, his testimony was not. Well, today I only killed 20 people. I used to kill 2,000, and I killed 30 yesterday, and guess what? I'm only down to two. He never killed again. Because when you meet the word for real, and your spirit comprehends who he is, you will never do it again. y'all preaching back to me because I didn't grow up with that kind of gospel I grew up with people that was purged out my pastor and them were on the altar and when they said put it down we put it down this generation is being raised up by people that are not willing to purify so they're giving you the process message right now honey mother Jane mother Carol and them used to come down at that table and put that put that that lace cloth on that offering table and open up their Bible with patent leather shoes on how many y'all remember that and they teach two or three skippers at Hosha they preach for an hour come on somebody and when you left church, your spirit didn't want to sin. There was something that came out of that word that your spirit grabbed that word. Who am I preaching to tonight? Back then it wasn't no, put that down. You know better than that. No, conviction came up in your spirit because you were being to preach the gospel from the right realm, from the right level, in the right spirit. No, the Bible was being rightly divided until it was made manifest into truth. why we can't hold long that's why we are weak generation that's why we backslide every other Sunday I'm not here because somebody is tickling your intellect but it's time for leadership to purify so you can have an anointing on your life that when you preach it they'll never do it again they'll come out and won't look back okay. y'all sit down because I said I wasn't going to Jesus. Somebody says that, that woman talking about the word. the 24th verse says and he said to them be careful what you are hearing okay come on come on come on come on let me tell you why let me tell you why because the amplified bible said be careful what you are hearing the measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more besides will be given to you who hear. What is he saying right there? Be careful what you hear. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to clarify and bring truth to something I said last night. Because it says that the measure, ain't he, of truth, the measure 
of truth that you hear is the measure of virtue and knowledge that will come to you. The prophets, I keep falling because the same measure of the word that you take in is the same level of virtue that will gravitate to you. You ain't got to try to live it. You ain't got to try to put it down. You ain't got to try to go find some money. You ain't got to pray about money. You ain't got to pray about a house. You ain't got to pray about healing. The measure of word that you hear will be the same measure that comes to you. So then, what do I have? What do I have in my life from the Lord? What I studied. I'm not going to get no more than I studied. Y'all ain't going to say nothing right there. I don't care who prophesied to you. Honey, let me tell you something. I don't care who tell you. I see, I see, I see. A prophecy was spoke open. But the only way, the only way that prophecy can be fulfilled, it was fulfilled and prophesied that Jesus would come. But guess what? He couldn't come in his fullness till he wrapped himself up, became the word made flesh. Okay. <laughs> Virtue, mother, mother, purification, clean, living right, doing right, knowledge. Well, you know, I, I really, I really want to start my own business, and I just really want somebody to help me. You, you don't know the creativity of God. You don't know the knowledge and the power of God. You can know that God can open up a window. He can lay you down, and you can wake up with a vision that can make you a millionaire tomorrow. You know why it ain't gonna come to pass? Cause it ain't just no, no dream. It ain't just what you ate. It ain't just a prophecy. It's not just a feeling. It's not an idea. It's what I study. When I put that word in me, it starts creating. Why? Because in the beginning, the world was created by the world. And if my world is going to be created, it's going to be created by the word. Listen, you didn't come for millionaires. Your family lineage is full of drunks and alcoholics and street walkers and prostitutes. It's not in your DNA to get what it is you think God's going to give you. That's why anything we're going to get in this hour, it's got to be created. I don't think you heard what I said because I know you didn't hear what I said because because if you did I don't even know how y'all still sitting down everything that's gonna happen for me no, 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 Moshe. It, it's a new creation but how do you say that prophet is bottom because it cannot come from my family lineage because the Bible said if any man be in Christ he is a new creature all things have passed away and behold all things what have become come out come get in him and come when I get in him it starts coming okay let me show you this let me show you this sit down, sit down Mr. I gotta show you this. See, when you when, when the Bible said, I was I was born in sin and shape and iniquity. I was born in an unpurified level and stage in the earth realm. I was positioned to have a place in the realm of the earth realm. My God, I love you. My God, I love you. My God, I love you. But because of sin, I dropped out of school. I did not finish. Everything got messed up. So now, who I am is a living dead man. I'm preaching to somebody right now. But when I get, when I get saved, I'm a new creature. Which means, I'm supposed to feel like a misfit. Because in the world, I'm not supposed to live victorious. I was destined to live in bondage. 
bondage and depression who am I talking to so if I'm a new creation then the world don't know how to service me yeah they'll deny me a job yeah they'll stamp no on my application yeah they want to kind of keep me in the projects and keep me depressed but when I recognize that I have been created then I will go back to the source that created me I will fill myself with the word and everything that I was born again to accomplish. I, okay, sit down. I'm preaching too hard. I'm preaching too hard. I'm preaching too hard. Sit down. I'm preaching too hard because I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't get y'all to see that. Uh, see, the next scripture says, well, sister, someone so really got this and I don't have that. She to him that have more will be given. Here we come now. That's why the devil don't want you to have the word because to him that have not, then that which you have will be taken away from you. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right there. You want to see the more come in your life? Okay, 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 okay. That's messing me up. The truth I hear will be the same measure that comes to me. Because I can be in Dunkin' Donuts standing in the line, man, in my own business. And I've been wanting to start my own popsicle shop. And God couldn't let somebody walk in the Dunkin' Donuts and stand in line behind you talking about how to start it up and where to go. You didn't have to go looking for it. Okay, I don't have nobody in here because I'm going to tell you something. I'm preaching hard right now. I said I'm preaching hard right now. You wondering why haven't some of my visions come to pass some things that God has shown me that I have I'm supposed to accomplish not enough word level to draw it to you oh come on you need a scripture <laughs> you need to put some bait on a hook I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right there you need to get some more level of the word in you because when you get it in you oh come on here somebody who am I preaching to okay, okay. Okay, you ain't got it yet. You ain't got it yet. You ain't got it yet. So let me just, let me just, let me just, let me just, let me just read this. So you go to Luke. I want you to see this. Tell somebody, be careful what you hear. Honey, that's all right. It don't be bad, Charlie. And what you say she has said, you said she said. I ain't got time to hear that. Now you trying to get all deep and stuff in and now you act like you are. Look, let me tell you something. The same measure. Now I'm going to help you now. Throw that thing in reverse. All that junk you let in your spirit, that's why junk follow you. All that mess you let come in your spirit, that's why mess follow you. All that poverty that you sit around, that's why poverty follow you. That's why all that negative talking you sit around, that's why negativity follow you. I'm preaching to somebody right now. You got to change your atmosphere if you want to change your future. Because what's in your future is determined by what you put in you. It just seems like I'm under curse. Break the curse. Shut your spirit to garbage and feed it the word. Can't get no whole lot of people to holler right there. Because it's going to be tempting sometime and it's going to sound like it's a prayer thing. Girl, let me tell you what happened. And you know what I heard. Okay. Okay. What's going to happen to me? If I now sit here and I listen to this. Because one thing, if I ain't the answer to the problem, then I don't need to hear about the problem. Y'all ain't saying nothing. 
Y'all ain't saying that. I ain't hear nobody talk to me with nothing. Y'all just don't want to talk back. Well, how in the world is she still in ministry? Because that was my motto. I don't care what they say. She stuck up. She act funny. She don't want to nobody. Honey, that, is she like, like she an untouched? But nope, I preach, pray, and prophesy, and I go home. I don't want to eat no back room. I don't want no fruit. I don't want to go in the green room. I don't want to sit down. I don't want to fellowship. Because this gets messy. I'm going home. I didn't come to make friends. I had friends before I came on the road. I came to preach the gospel and mind my own business. I don't want to hear about nobody else's ministry. No, you don't even have to tell me like it's a prayer request. Because I pray every morning at 5 o'clock. If God want me to pray for him, he'll let me pick him up in the spirit. And he'll tell me the part I need to know. I'm not hearing y'all preach back to me right there. I'm not hearing nobody because I'm going to tell you something. The devil comes to steal your future. And it ain't just people in the world. He come to bring people right in the church. Right there that sit next to you jumping and shouting to steal the anointing off your life. And you got to learn that I got too much that I need God to work out. There's too many things that I know God has for my life. And I can't afford to give you a passageway into the same spirit that's going to get me to my next level. can't afford it. That's three people say I can't afford it. It's too expensive. I don't want no soup that bad. I don't want no fruit that bad. Next time, gotta go. Gotta get up early. Gotta catch my plane. What you think? I don't know. Prophet, what you think about what I don't know? I don't know nothing about that. But I'll talk to y'all. Thank you so much for inviting me. Gotta go. But you know the word out on you is that you all stuck up. I said, but the word is still out that I'm still anointed too, so it don't matter. Come on here, somebody. Come on here, somebody. You gotta, you gotta learn how to protect the thing that God is gonna use to transport your victories. There's too many things that God has connected in your spirit that's waiting for food so that it can gravitate to you. Okay, y'all sit down because I didn't get off somewhere. So. Rusty water and clean water came one out the same pipe. I ain't never heard Jesus say, I feel so bad because they don't, don't want to be my friend. He walked with power and he walked with authority. And I don't care how much they talked about him and lied on him. When somebody died, they didn't send for nobody else but Jesus. Come on, I'm not hearing y'all talk to nobody right there. I'm not hearing y'all say nothing right there. I'm not hearing you say nothing right there. You got an assignment on your life and you sit up around a bunch of knuckleheads talking about nothing. You got to be careful that you don't let the religious system suck everything that God has in you out trying to keep up with the Joneses. Let me tell you something. I'll tell you if you know God called you because you're going to be ostracized. You're going to be put aside. People won't understand you. Who am I talking about? Woe unto you when people say all oh, manner of good about you. You've already got your reward. Oh, sit down because I got to finish this. I'm, I'm going off somewhere. I turned him off quick, mother. Call myself up. How you doing? Fine. Girl, I, I just really miss talking. All right. Da, 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 da. And you know what? So, hey, ho, ho. Hold on. I got to go. Oh, this ain't really nothing bad. I got to go. Because I got to stand in front of 20,000 people. And I got to have a real word. And I ain't got time for my spirit to be playing with no words in my mind. 
that I heard. And that's why when I watch people on television preaching, I love everybody because I don't know nothing about nobody because I don't let nobody tell me because you don't know who God going to use to bless your life. That's why you better shut your ears to all that stuff because the very people you let people sit up and talk about you too, that may be the very person that you may turn on the television one night when you got a gun in your hand and they got a word to stop you from blowing your brains out. Who am I preaching to right there? You don't know who got your blessing. I feel the Holy Ghost right there. Somebody says, that woman is preaching. I know I'm preaching. Because when you start spending that quality time with God and you start purifying and you start feeding your spirit the word, your discernment goes up and God trains you how to love people from a distance. He trains you how to let somebody embrace you and you know when you hug them you're embracing a demon something about this one ain't right i can't put my finger on it but mm -mm. okay i'm not getting to say nothing but it's why is this because let's look at the scripture right quick luke 8 and 11. Let me give you the meaning. Now the meaning, Luke 8 and 11. Now the meaning of the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Somebody said the seed is the word of God. Say the seed is the word of God. Say it again. The seed is the word of God. It says in the 12th verse, those along the travel those along the traveled road the, along the traveled road are the people who have heard then the devil comes and carries away the message out of their hearts that they may not believe acknowledge me as their savior and devote themselves to me and be saved here and after now, now get what that just said those that travel along the way, those that travel along the way, those that travel along the way, those that just come to church on Sundays is those that hear the word. And the devil come and he takes the word out of their heart. Why? Why did it just say he takes it? So they can't believe. Let me tell you something. That was key right there. So let me reverse that. If I keep the word, I will believe. If the devil take the word, then I can't believe. I don't have the capability in myself, in my emotions, to just believe. I need a word in my heart to believe. I'm talking to somebody right now. See, that's why when you come to church and you get to get a preach word before you can get outside good. Somebody in the parking lot cut you off and bring the cuss up at you. Because it ain't, it ain't even about the parking space. It ain't even about the usher said go this way. But you didn't have to say it like that. You about to get into a fight right in the sanctuary. Well, you know why? Because he knew that the word went out and it hit your heart. So he got one responsibility. And that is before you can get home, get it. Get that word. Because if I can take that word, she can't believe. If I can take the word he just got and let his wife make him mad before that word can take root, he can't believe. I'm not here, nobody. Why is it so quiet in here? Why is it so quiet in here? Well, I, I thought she was gonna get the baby from the nurse. I got the baby last Sunday. Well, I thought, well, I, I, I ain't. I, I, I'm a deacon. Don't be. The, I don't want nobody to be seeing me getting no baby. You the baby's mama. I thought you was going to give me a ride home, girl. I, well, I got, I, well, you said you would. Said, well, don't play me like that. If you wasn't going to give me no ride, you should have told me you weren't going to get Because I could have got a ride from Sister Watermiller. And now I'm walking. You know you wrong for that. But that's all right. It ain't about the ride. It ain't about the baby. It ain't about the wife. It ain't about the husband. It's about the devil has an assignment. It's about the enemy knows that a real word went into the hearts of God's people. And now he has a responsibility. I got to get it. I got to get it. I got to get it. Because if I ever get it, the thing that they've been praying for, they're going to mess around and have the ability to believe God. Let 
Y'all look at it and be funny. Okay, come on. Come on. Tell your neighbor, come on with me. Now watch this. And those upon the rock are the people who when they hear the word, receive and welcome it with joy. But these have no root. They believe for a while. And in a time of trial and temptation, fall away, withdraw, and stand aloof. Oh, y'all, 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 I can't, I can't, I, I cannot get you to even understand what he's trying to say right here to you. In, in the, in, and in the time of, and in the time of trial, and temptation oh God I love you Jesus I, the trial and the temptation is not about you it ain't even your attack baby it is the attack on the word that you done heard oh the devil ain't stunning you the devil ain't thinking about you the reason why he's on your track right now it ain't because of they get oh honey the enemy is after me and the devil is praying no the enemy is after the word he's mad because of the word he's mad because you know what you're not just one that's traveling along the way you received it with joy now i'm gonna tell you why that makes him scared because the joy of the lord is my strength and if i let them keep that word they'll keep their joy therefore they'll be strong in the lord and in the power of his might i'm preaching too hard i'm preaching too hard did you just hear that did you just hear that do you know what i just did i just Ooh, I just annihilated. Pray for me. Just pray my strength, girl. I just, I just got rid of that line. We don't need that line no more. Because if I get the word, then I ought to expect that a trial is coming up. Because if while I'm preaching right now, and you start rejoicing, baby, you just got dangerous in the kingdom. Because he don't mind you hearing it. But don't receive it with joy. Because when you get joy, you get strength. When you get strength, you get power. When you get power, you get an anointing. When you get an anointing, you get an assignment. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. I gotta say that. Just in case you heard me say it. You, I was yelling too much for you to hear me. Oh, if I get joy, I get strength. If I get strong, I get power. If I get power, I get an anointing. And if I get an anointing, I get an assignment. Because after the anointing, the Bible says, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Today. Not after he. <laughs> because you know what power is? Lord, want to give you to power to lay on the hands of the sick, to cast out devils, and over every evil work of the devil. And then, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel. So the same Christ that I believe in to be the word that now lives in me, and I just received it. Now, I just didn't receive a word. I just received power to lay hands on the sick, to cast out devils. I just received power. I just received an anointing to set the captive free. Oh, who am I preaching to? Who am I preaching to? That's why as soon as you feel your spirit growing in the word, the attacks get greater and warfare break out like never before. And everybody you thought was your friend turn against you. And it seemed like people that you've never had odds with. They act like they hate your guts. It's not about that. It's the devil understanding that something in your heart has been changed and transformed by the renewing of the word. Y'all sit down because I got to calm down because I ain't going to finish this. I ain't going to finish this. I ain't going to finish this. Because I've been changed. I've been transformed. 
from where you pray my strength. Devil, don't come no further. Take your hands off now in the name of Jesus. I'm not asking you, I'm commanding you. I take authority from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. You can speak over your children. You can speak to your body. You ain't got to wait till you come to church. You can speak those things which be not, honey. This word puts you over in the creativity. Sit down because I got, I got, I got, I got, I got to calm down because I don't, is y'all getting this? How do I know it's for real, okay? So it may not be this, it may not be, okay, you may, you may ain't got it to this level right here in your mind calculated yet. It's there, it's there. It's not calculated to this point of, you know, I'm, I speak into existence. Everything that I desire, but God, you may not have it like that. But let me tell you the first sign to know that you got it. Because you're going through stuff and you're dealing with stuff, and all of a sudden, you just start saying little stuff like this after you get a word. I ain't even finna fool with that. I, I can't even be bothered. Now, see, that's little slang stuff. But let me give you a secret that creativity thing, they done jumped in you. That power to create something new because the Bible said now you shall have whatsoever you say so when you begin to say I'm not getting ready to be bothered then it can't bother you because you begin to create around you what you now understand is supposed to be yours uh, come on you you start saying stuff I ain't taking another day I ain't fooling with him another day I'm not fooling with her another day you know what I ain't gonna cry another tear you know what I'm getting up from here and I'm going home you know what I'm going to work and I'm gonna sit right next to this demon and honey I ain't even studying you it is like you don't even exist matter of fact good morning do you want some coffee because that day is over with you're not gonna harass me another day you're not gonna torment me another day I take authority over my booth and everything around it I place the blood in your chair I place the blood all around me as a matter of fact the Bible has given me power that if I go through the trial like Daniel, I can subdue kingdoms. I can change laws. I can change policies on my job. I'm telling you, the joy of the Lord is my strength. When I get joy, I get strength. When I get strength, I get power. When I get power, I get an assignment. Sit down, y'all. Can I just make this little statement right here? Before I go to the next church. Tell somebody, now I'm finna do something. Cause see, cause see, when I get my joy, I get my strength. When I get my strength, I get my power. When I get my power, I get an anointing. When I get an anointing, I get an assignment. Now I know I'm finna do something. Now I know no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Now I know that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will look up and stand against them. Why? Because I have an assignment. Can I bring it home? Because I walk with this Jesus. I eat this Jesus. I digest this Jesus. Now I come in the volume of the book. I come in it. Okay. Let me just sit down. Let me just. Because just, I've been hurting myself in here. Hi, honey. I've been hurt myself. Hi, baby. Ah, y'all sit down. This cologne just came by me. Y'all gotta pray me back up in the spirit, cause y'all know I just went. I ain't seen my husband in days. I just went straight to the flesh. That just messed me up because I ain't seen him in a few days. And he's fine and look good and all that kind of stuff. Y'all know what I'm saying, don't play. <laughs> so. The volume of the book just walked in. <laughs> Fullness in his power. Anointed. The anointed one. <laughs> okay, y'all said that. Let me just, let me just, let me just, let me just, let me just. Let me hurry up and finish this now. (laughs) 
Ain't gonna be no long preach tonight, saints. <laughs> then it says, then it says, let me finish this. Then it says, here we go now, here we go now. You getting it? You getting it? You getting it? The word of God is what? The seed. That's the seed. Okay. So, his seed's being tossed to tag along as come to church. And his seed's being sown. Now we're getting inside of the body of Christ because the Bible said that Jesus spoke to Peter and said, Upon this rock I will build my church in the very gates of hell prevail against thee. So when you, whenever you see that these are those that fell up on the rock, this, this is the ones that fell up on the church. And then they shouted and got the joy and let the devil get it because the church can never be strong enough to affect the outside world Till it gets its joy and joy provides strength and strength provide power and power and anointing and anointing brings you an assignment so maybe that's just why you go to a church where y'all just go to church and your church don't have an assignment yet it don't know what it's been called to do because these are they where the word is there but it's on the rock okay this. Now, we're moving closer to the level of the maturity of the believer. It says in the 14th verse, and as for what fell among the thorns, these are the people who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked and suffocated with the anxieties and the cares and the riches and the pleasures of life. And their fruit does not ripen, come to maturity. Lord, I'm, I'm preaching right there. And perfection. These are the ones in the book of Corinthians that talk about you won't come off of the milk. These are the ones that remain unskilled in the word. These are the ones that they're coming. They're trying to come. But you get getting choked by, I need a car. I need a house. I need a, God, another mattress. God, give us another bed. God, when we going to move? I want a new apartment. Lord, when are you going to give us another church? Let's, oh, God, I'm preaching to somebody right there. Um, see, when you know that you are you 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 have greatness in you, my husband and I, I'm glad he walked in here because it brought my mind to something. We have a church. We have a church, and I think our sanctuary may see 200 people. And so people will say, "Oh, y'all need to get a big church. Y'all need to get a big church." And so when we first when we first got married, two, about two and a half years ago, three years ago. People would come into our church. We would join in our church like 35, 40 people, 60 people on a Sunday. And so one day he and I went out to dinner and we said, you know what? We're bringing people in here like cattle. And we don't even know these people. We don't even know what their motives are. So we shut the doors to our church. The big building that we were in, we moved the church to a small building that seats about 200 people. People, oh, y'all, oh, and what I need about them all over the world. Her husband's face is all over the world. And his anointed and her, y'all can really be big. And my husband, God began to speak to him and say, greatness is not determined by the size of your building. Greatness is determined by the size of your assignment. Who am I preaching to right there? God, I wish I'm preaching. Listen, so the Lord had to deliver us from the spirit of the thorns that says, I hear your word. I hear what you want us to do, but don't let us get choked with. Give us a big church. Oh, God, do this for us. Oh, God, bring us 10,000 members. But instead, we took those people and made them for about six months wear aprons to church every Sunday. And we preached on servanthood and serving for six months. Are you hearing me? Now that I'm getting ready to go to the dome, these people are going to be my ushers and my intercessors. Do you know why? Because the assignment is how big the anointing is. Can you handle God's assignment? Your anointing is being choked with another man's vision. Because you think you got to keep up with everybody else to prove who you are. I feel the Holy Ghost on somebody in here. Who am I helping right there? You got to be careful. How do you know that, that, that the enemy trying to 
choking because that's what he brings to you. Y'all ain't got enough money. Y'all need 20 more people. Y'all ain't got enough members. If you ain't got but three, I would take them three and I would birth in them the spirit of excellence. I would birth in them the spirit of wisdom. I would birth in them the spirit of love. I will help them understand it ain't but three of us, but we got a nationwide assignment. Who am I preaching to? He said, these are they. These ain't the people, ain't he, that's being attacked by the devil. These are the people that's begging. And then when you don't get it, you're full of anxiety. But God, I thought you was going to do it. And now I feel embarrassed because I told people that I was going to get a car. And now I don't have a car. You got your car yet? No, it ain't time. I ain't got my car yet. Well, I wonder what happened. Because my spirit ain't ready. Because the Bible said that you should prosper even your soul prosper. So apparently God saw something in me that was incorrect. Because see, we won't tell the truth. We won't go and say that on ourselves. But see, it's all that, you know, keeping up with everybody. And just gotta, I, you, you gotta have one. I gotta have one. You gotta skin down. You gotta knit. You gotta this. You gotta that. I gotta do. No, all I got is a regular pair of jeans and some t-shirts. But I'm coming here to serve God. I'm not coming here for no fashion show. I'm coming here because I love Jesus. As a matter of fact, I'm praying every Sunday that God just slap me under the bench. Whatever he need to do in my life. Because you know what? I'm not going to come all the way here. I'm not going to come from the road. And I'm not going to come past the rock. And get all the way here in the thorn of my life. When I'm getting another level of the word. And let stuff chuck the word out of me. Let stuff suffocate me. Let stuff blind my eyes to what the real riches are. What is the real wealth of God? What is the real glory of God? It ain't money. It ain't cars. It ain't houses. It's knowing what is your assignment in God. I'm not hearing nobody preach back to me because this, this is this ain't no, no preach back message. Okay, come on. Sit down. This is hurting a little bit, but come on. Now, here we go. It says, ain't he? And their fruit. I don't know if y'all, do y'all Bible say that? Well, go buy your Amplified Bible because I want your Bible to say that. <laughs> I want your Bible to say what my Bible say. Because I like what my Bible say. It says here, mother, that they ask for all these things and they're suffocated. Auntie, this is so powerful. But this is the generation or the phase of the church when they when they have the word and they're wordy in the word but they desire stuff but they have no fruits of the spirit the meanest people you ever want to meet the most attitude acting cocky arrogant we can't even let you testify a half a note before you now go into the nations i'm not hearing nobody talk to me i can't get nobody saying puffed up don't have speak to people act like you so much and good Lord, don't let about. Do you know I, I, I'm, I'm an event? I'm supposed to sit. You supposed to sit anywhere you can find a seat. Because the front row don't mean you more powerful. It means if you ain't got fruit, you in our way. That's what it means. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right there. I wish I had somebody talk. Everybody's trying to find their position in here where there's no fruit. It ain't enough fruit. The fruit done spoiled. We got gifts. We got talents. We got how when we pull up in that parking lot. It looks like a car dealership. But where is fruit? God is looking for the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, meekness, tenderness, gentleness, loving kindness, long suffering, patience. Pastor Ripley, I'm getting less and less amens as the night go on. In a stage where we know the word, but can't say sorry. Ooh, I just preach right there. I just would rather buy me a cake than to say you sorry. I was in the Bible bookstore and I thought about you and gave you this book. Demon, I don't want no book. You owe me an apology. You trying to give me no book? You hurt my feelings, you say you sorry. 
I was thinking about you. I thought I'd buy you this scarf. I don't want no scarf from you. Where's your spirit of humility? Why you can't repent for what you did? Why you can't say you sorry? Why can't you say forgive me? I was wrong. You know what? I messed up that time. You know what, sister? Can I see you outside? This is real hard for me because God's really breaking my spirit. But I didn't handle you right. And I messed up. And I want you to know I'm trying to get it right. And will you please forgive me? With your God, when I'm going to get my new car and I got my Mercedes stapled on the inside of the inside of the cover of my Bible. And my prophecy written down, the prophecy so-and-so gave me in 1969, I know it's coming to pass. It is not because you ain't got no fruit. Y'all sit down, because I'm, I'm through. I'm, I just got to read this one scripture right here. I know it's a little dim back there, but don't let me walk back there, because I don't see enough of y'all praising God right over here. So if you can't say amen, just say ouch. One of my workers was doing something for me today and, and, and she was telling me about my computer because I turned the computer off and the computer wouldn't come back on. I said, the, I said, now what is wrong with my computer? It won't come back on, it won't come back on, it won't come back on. And, and so Bonita said, you know, she, 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 my personal assistant, she said, well, I, you have to plug it up and let the battery see. And my husband's been really teaching me a lot about computers. So I'm really, really, I've really come a long ways. I really know a, a lot now. And so I was like, that ain't her, because she don't even have no computers. I said, that ain't, that ain't what's wrong with it. I said, something is wrong with it. You would have to work for me to know how strong I can be sometimes. And so she said, um, excuse me, prophetess, it is. The battery is too low. And so you have to just let it. I said, Bonita, this runs by power. Ain't no battery low. This ain't got nothing to do with it. Something is wrong with my computer. She said, it's not. You just got to just plug it up. And so I turned around and looked at her like, don't tell me that. Don't say it. I said. And so I turned around and I said, I said. It ain't the battery. Something is wrong. So she said, well, I'm going to go on downstairs and get your coffee. So she went on downstairs and got the coffee. And when she came back, I walked over there. And by that time, a little part on it was green. And I pressed it and it came on. And she looked up at me. And I said, yeah, well, I see it came on. And the Spirit of the Lord said, say you sorry. <laughs> and I mean, I felt that thing too. I was like... Well, I, I, I guess she was right. The Spirit of the Lord says, say you sorry. I said, you know, Bonita, I guess she was telling the truth. He said, I didn't say that. I said, tell her you sorry. I said, I'm sorry. I was wrong. You was right. I, it, it, it was the court. Some of y'all act like y'all can't say sorry to somebody. He looking for fruit. Why you looking for stuff? He looking for fruit. There's too many people looking for the two different things. Last thing. But as for, here it is now. Tell somebody this is where we all want to be, right here. But as for that seed in good soil, these are the people who hearing the word, hold it fast in a just and noble and virtuous and worthy heart and steadily bring forth fruit with patience do y'all hear that did y'all just see that did y'all just see that did y'all just see that did... so tell somebody this that what I get from God is the word that I plant in my spirit and the word that is made manifest from my spirit is the kind of soil that is planted in keep your soul filthy ain't none coming Did I just help you, baby? Did I just help you? It's a clean soil that brings about fruit. Lord have mercy. That brings about results. You're looking for results, and you want everything you experience. You're looking for God to do something. Oh, God, I want you to do it. First of all, you ain't got enough word in you. And second of all, the word you got in you is being choked smothered, suffocated. 
And then you think because you have a real good emotional time in church, I felt the power of God. Ain't nothing happening. You're in the realm of familiarity of the spirit realm. You are toying with the anointing, but it's not the yoke breaking anointing. You feel the presence because he promised to dwell in the temple. But it's not a yoke breaking anointing. It's not an anointing that breaks yokes. It's not an anointing that destroys the works of the devil. It's not an anointing that puts you in the commanding position until it's in purified soil. Did I, am, I, am I helping you, baby? It, it ain't going to do nothing. Until you, and that's why we have to constantly clean before the Lord. That's why we have to constantly come and say, God, wash me. God, cleanse me. You know why? Because when I sit down and read my Bible, I don't sit down and read it filthy. I sit down and read my Bible and say, Father, before I read your word, wash me and cleanse me. If there's something in me that's here that, you, that I don't even know is there, God, wash my mind, wash my thoughts. I said, purify my spirit because when I put the word in me, it's got to stick. Oh, I got to hear. I got to, I got to grow something. There's some things I got on the altar that I need you to do that I found out. It can't be done outside your word. And your word cannot be made manifest if it's trying to be birthed out through filthy soil that have not been tilled. Is that something? Is that something? Because how many people know that? How many people knew? How many people here really knew that? I'm just believing. I'm naming and claiming. I'm going to speak it. And God going to do it. And the devil got you in deception for 10 years because you know what? You the rock. You the church. And so you think it's supposed to happen. Don't happen that way. Saul got to be mature. You got to have a seed. And you got to plant it. Keep on going to church. The devil let you go to church. He'll let you shout. He'll let you speak in tongues. He'll let us run all around this church. He'll have, he, he'll have the nurses sewing more prayer claws and throw claws than we can handle. Until everybody in here can have their own. So you can shout and lay down and cover your own self up. He doesn't care. He doesn't care how big our choirs is. He doesn't care how big our choirs is. He doesn't care how many of us say I'm called to the ministry. He doesn't care about any of that. The only thing he's afraid of is a person that consistently feed their spirit on a continual and habitual diet of the word. Because that is a person that can speak those things but be not as though they were. That is a person that don't lose faith. Because faith is the word. Faith is not my feelings. Faith is not what I think. Faith is not my emotions. I'm going to read this one scripture and I'm finished. Did y'all say, oh no? I thought I heard somebody say, oh no. I want to read something to you. So then we get to the point where it says, now, we done said be careful what you hear. Now this is the last one I want to read to you. Luke 8 and 18 said, be careful therefore how you listen. is for to him who has spiritual knowledge will more be given now listen to this this is this is this is this is my ending scripture and from him who does not have spiritual knowledge even what he thinks and guesses and supposes that he was will be taken away now that right there is nasty with strength it said even who he supposes and guesses that he has will be taken away, ain't he? Even what you think you got. Yes, Lord. First Thessalonians, right quick. This right here your power is your power take home scripture. Yes, Catherine. First Thessalonians. Lord, I love you. I love this kind of teaching. It, 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 it blesses me. It blesses me. Now this is what you're getting ready to get. First Thessalonians 2 and 13. And we also especially thank God continually for this. That when you received the message of God which you heard from us. 
you welcomed it not as the word of mere men, but as it truly is the word of God, which is, what is the word of God? It is effectually at work in you who believe. What is it doing? Exercising its superhuman power in those who adhere to, trust in, and rely on it. Do y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? When I received the word as the word of God, and that just blessed me. It blessed me today when I read it. That it being exercised in me, the minute I read it, is a superhuman power. That means every time I read it, it empowers me to be able to accomplish something that in the natural, I would not have accomplished. That means every time I read it, everything, mother, that I'm going to do, the word in me that I already went up the street and around the corner. And it's already causing me to function in a superhuman People say, well, how in the world do you preach like that? How in the world do you go all over the country? Because when you got it in you, it's a superhuman power. I told my husband that last night, I see, he said, how do you feel? I said, I feel, I feel really tired, but it's just like something in me is just like, Phew. It's a superhuman power. That's how the disciples walked from one place to the next. That's why they didn't need no ride. You going to church tonight, you going to Bible study, I ain't going tonight, I ain't getting no ride. You going to Bible study tonight, I ain't going tonight because you know what? It, it, just, it was just so far. It was like we on the other side of town and by the time I had, they walked for two and three and four days. Superhuman power. And after they got through walking, they preached. And some of them got beat up and left for dead. And they got up and went right back into the city that they just got beat up in and kept on preaching. And the minute somebody talk about us, we don't come to church for three months. The minute we see one thing in the church, we're like, well, you know, I, I just feel led to just leave this church and just go to another church because it's just some of my spirit. I, you know, I, I, it's just what I sense. Because the minute you can't control it, and the minute it's not the way you want it to be, then I feel led of the Lord that it's just time to me to leave. But we don't understand that iron shopping of iron, and we don't understand that when we're, being, when we're being led to leave, we're really being led to grow. We're really being led to just suck it up and, and, and understand that this is my level of maturity. This is when God is calling me to pull that word in my spirit and begin to move to another level of maturity till I begin to find out that coming to my church ain't about me. And all the stuff they're doing is not for me to be comfortable. It's for me to come and get an assignment. I don't hear nobody talk to me. The junior church they got, it ain't for my kids. It's for me to train my kids how to be teachers of the word. And how to train my kids to bring their unsaved kids to church so they can learn about Jesus in the junior church. It ain't so I can take a break in church because I'm sick of my hard head kids because I ain't raised them no how. And I get a break. God, I love you, Jesus. Why can't I get nobody to say nothing like that? Why, am I t why can't I get nobody to say anything like that? And so the church becomes an organization, organization where we all come together and just get peace. And the one time everybody ain't got air in their church, just be glad to get to church because air conditioning feels so good. Everybody just want to be comfortable. But nobody want to come and say, I want to be those where the word fell on the soil that was good. I want my assignment. Because whether you understand it or not, there's a boredom that's hitting the kingdom of God and people are tired of just sitting still. You get to the point now where you already know what, what they're going to be doing in church before you even get there. Well, it's 2.15. Okay, right now the choir is singing. All right, it's 10.45. Okay, they're passing out the offering buckets right now. 
uh, if I get there about, about 10.35, they'll be reading the announcements. I'll get right there when Pastor get there. Because we've left the place of the true soil. And so God can't plant anything in us. And what we keep planting is, Lord, forgive me and forgive me scriptures. And I messed up scriptures. You're going mostly by Bibles. And it'll lead you to your level. When you get home tonight and you look in your Bible, it'll lead you to your level. Just go look at all the scriptures that you got marked up and it'll tell you where you've been in the last year. Oh God, I, I, okay. Your Bible will tell you where you've been in the last year. And some of y'all, please don't let your Bible scare you. Because yours will make you think that you are new in Christ Jesus because you ain't marked nothing. Now I see people closing their Bibles. Don't leave it open and just look at your neighbor's Bible. You, you, can, tell, you can tell who's sitting there. You ain't, listen, you ain't even got to have a discernment today. You can tell almost the level of person that's sitting next to you. Look at their Bible. See, y'all laughing now. They laughing now, Pastor. One thing underlined. Are we talking about the saints? See, his brother's Bible all marked up. Go through your Bible tonight and read your scriptures. And you'll see all your help me, Lords, and strengthen me, Lords, and all, and that though I walk in the valley, and God give me your help, and give me your love, and, and I just, and you got it marked all down, and, and got initials by it, because that's initials that mean stuff that you walk through in the dates. But how many times have you read Revelations? How many times have you read Daniel? How many times have you read Ezekiel? How many times have you got into Jeremiah? How many times have you tapped into what is the assignment of the Lord and how it, 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 it relates to what happened in Israel and how it is now connected to where we are now and where should we be functioning as the people of God? Our assignment now is universal. It is no longer local. Oh, come on, somebody. It's, Lord, how can I affect the outside world? Our churches should be praying, God. Pastor Ripley and I were talking about this. Help us to adapt the nation, adapt the country. Father, put it on our heart. Pastors that's in this place should be saying, God, give us Egypt. God, give us Ireland. God, give us a country. Give us a nation that you want us to pray for. And then show us how to go there and affect that nation. Oh, I'm ministering right now, saints. It's time for us to get the assignment. All over this building, as I lay this microphone down, it's the word, saints. How many people today, you were provoked to read it today? It's like, today reading your word meant something different than it did three days ago. Because you know, I move things when I got enough in here. I can change things when this is full. When I'm loaded in here, I'm undefeated. Whew. When I got it in here, my brother, and I meditate on it day and night, it'll keep me strong. It'll keep me focused. I won't need nobody to hold my hand. It'll remind me of what God's will is for my life. It is my love for his word that causes me to survive during hard times, not my emotions. My faith in God is not my feelings. Somebody need to say that. Say that with me. My faith in God. My faith in God is his word. I increase my word. I increase my faith. I reject my word. And I decline in my faith. You do. 
as I leave this building all over this room. I'm learning every day how to walk in the faith of God. And I said last night when I began to minister in the offering, I said, only people, and I'm learning this, who have the word in them can get up and walk in faith.